how are you? This is Mark. In English, there are lots of grammar rules, just like in any other language. However, there are a myriad of exceptions and points that teachers don't usually explain during a normal lesson. In this series, I'm going to talk about those exceptions and points that you aren't aware they even exist. So let's begin with what you don't know about adjectives, shall we? Right, so what you don't know about adjectives. Few things though you should know. They modify nouns and they don't change gender, case or number. You can watch a lesson especially on adjectives if you click here. Now, they can be used as complements after linking verbs. What are linking verbs? There's a special lesson on that too. You can click here to watch that lesson. But they are verbs such as be, feel, become, etc. If you put this verb after a pronoun, like for example, I feel sad, and then we have the adjective sad, you can replace this verb, this linking verb, with the word equals. So for example, I equals sad, or she became angry, she equals angry. So this can give you a an idea of what uh, a linking verb is with an adjective. So it, the adjective there is a complement. So the, the, the other point that I want to talk about with the linking verbs is that few adjectives follow prepositions like to or of when used with linking verbs. For example, he was, the, ver the linking verb here is to be, allergic to, allergic to pollen. He was allergic to pollen. So the adjective allergic is followed by the preposition to. The second example that I listed here, her face was filled with horror. So filled with horror. The adjective right there is filled and then the preposition with and that I listed here uh, to or of, but there are also uh, with or other uh, prepositions, as we, we will see. Then there is another example. They are capable of winning the contest. Capable of. Now, when adjectives uh, like, uh, uh, for example, different, different can have three choices. The first one is the one used in the United States, in American English. So, different than. In British English, they prefer to use or from or to. So, I listed three examples. They are different from each other. This is British English. In American English, you can say they look different than their parents. This is American English. And then the other example, which is British English, he feels no different to you. Now, there is another point that I want to talk about uh, using linking verbs, and that is when adjectives refer to somebody's feelings or beliefs and are used with linking verbs, like I said before, they are often used with a that clause. So, I, I got two examples here. He was certain that she was wrong. So, certain is the adjective and then the that clause that she was wrong. That she was wrong. Or, she felt so sure that she had been there before. So that she had been there before is the that clause and then sure is the adjective. I'm going to erase this and I'm going to show you other points that you don't know about adjectives. Yes, we're going to talk about five points and exceptions about adjectives. As I said, adjectives go before nouns. 
but not always, okay? Because we have noun plus adjectives, just like my examples. He is six feet tall. Six feet tall. Tall, here is the adjective. Feet is the noun. And 25 years old. Years is the noun. Old is the adjective. Another example. Like it or not, Trump is now the president-elect. President is the noun and elect is the adjective. So don't take things for granted and think about when you write something. There are a lot of exceptions in English. So the second exception or point that I want to talk about is about comparative and superlative adjectives. Now, you know the usual one-syllable adjective, take ER or EST, like tall. So we say taller than the tallest, okay, and so on. One syllable or big, right? Bigger, we add another G because it's consonant, vowel, consonant. So we need to add another uh, consonant. In this case, is G. So bigger than and the biggest. But the second syllable adjectives are a little bit tricky. So the second syllable adjectives ending with Y, so happy, we add the, we take out the Y and we add the I. So happier, the happiest. We have also cozy and etc. We have many. Now the two syllable adjectives, some take ER or EST like gentle, narrow, friendly, etc. And others take more or the most, like pleasant. We say more pleasant than the most pleasant or thoughtful, the uh, more thoughtful than and the most thoughtful or cheerful, etc. Now, there is another thing that I want to tell you about uh, this, which is the adjective, now the adjective, fun. It's not an adjective, it's informally used as an adjective, but it's a noun. So we say more fun, not funner than. Just recently has been introduced as an adjective, but is actually is born as a noun, fun. Now, the third point that I want to talk about is participial adjectives. They're related to present participles. So the, we add the uh, ing. So they refer to a person or object causing the adjective. Let's take a look at the examples. He was amusing at the party. Here, amusing is an adjective. Okay, and so we can ask ourselves, how was he at the party? He was amusing. So, he provided enjoyment. Another example, a charming fellow approached her. What kind of fellow was he? We can ask ourselves. So, he was charming. So, uh, charming here is an effect that somebody has on people. In this case, right? Charming. So, it's the adjective. Now, we have the ed adjectives. They, they have the same form as past participles, which could be regular or irregular, and you know that. They refer to the person or object experiencing the adjective. So, the example that I listed here is, I looked at him and saw a discouraged man. So, how was this man? How did he feel? He felt discouraged. Another example, after the accident, she had a broken bone. How was the bone? It was broken. The last point that I want to talk about is uh, compound adjectives. And uh, compound adjectives are, for example, noun plus adjective or noun plus noun, etc. I give you two uh, examples like light-hearted or well-off. These are adjectives that are called compound adjectives because they are uh, put together. If you want to watch a lesson on this, you can click here. Now, these adjectives, these compound adjectives, can be borrowed from other languages. So, just like 
à la mode, from French, right? Or de facto, from Latin. Or ad hoc, from Latin. Or avant-garde, from French. So there are a lot of them, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any requests, any comments, or if you want to post your own example that you found bizarre about adjectives, you may do it by typing it under the video. Please, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I suggest you do. You'll get a new lesson every week. Have a great day and see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.